Hello and welcome to Curious City. With a difference, we're on lockdown. Um, this is all about helping creative freelancers, indie businesses, arts companies raise awareness about their current plight and tell you how you can help them. So if you're keen to get in touch or you know someone that needs some help, please email me letty at curious.art. And just to say, we are recording this online so the audio isn't usual industry studio spec. So forgive us for that and enjoy. Hello and welcome to another episode of Curious City on Lockdown. Today I'm delighted to say I'm talking to David McLeavy, who's the director of Block Projects, which is a not-for-profit contemporary arts organisation in Sheffield. Dave, hello. Hello, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you so much for coming to, to talk to us. Now, um, for those uh, listeners who, who don't know, um, can you just give us a bit of background on Block Projects, who you are and what you do and how long you've been going for, that kind of thing? Yeah, so Block Projects has been around since 2002, uh, which is sometimes slightly surprising to a lot of people. Um, it was set up as a project space off the back of Block Studios, which is a collective group of studio artist studios in Sheffield. When it started, it was a project space to show their work and artists they were interested in working with. And slowly over the years, since 2002, it's developed into a, a more ambitious um, a slightly larger scale organisation. Um, in 2007 it became its own entity but we're still based within the studios here at Block um, okay. and then I came on board well just over three years ago in April 2017 I think it was. It feels like it's gone really quickly but also quite small. Um, so we did so we deliver exhibitions, events, workshops, talks, lots of different activity, artist development sort of activity uh, across the region, but also nationally. Um, we have a physical gallery space that's based uh, on just behind a Cathlon in Sheffield, which is usually a good place to point yeah. people to. I know it. I know it well. Yeah, it's about five minute walk from the station. Uh, if I start mentioning particular streets, people tend to get lost a little bit. Um, so we have a physical gallery space where we present the vast majority of our activity, but we uh, also do offsite projects working with other organizations and groups and individuals outside different parts of Sheffield, but also in other cities as well. So it's a very collaborative sort of community focused um, organization, as well as for honing in on key artists at, at various times. That's exactly right, yeah. We're a very small team, but the beauty of that is we have a lot of collaborative partners that we work with um, throughout the year on various different types of projects. So the team is so small, for a long time it was um, just me and our, our, board, our fantastic board of directors who uh, offer a really useful insight and sounding board. More recently we were able to take on a fantastic uh, public programmes coordinator called Sunshine Wong. Nice. And she's, she's been with us since January. Uh, yeah beautiful great name uh, and and yeah it's been fantastic to be able to have a bit more capacity um, to deliver things but also just to have someone else to contribute to the creative direction of the organization some of the ideas of what we want to do within the program and how has the virus affected block projects and I suppose the because you, you support artists at, at key stages in their in their development and in their fledgling or emerging careers so how have you as a company been impacted and also the artists or communities that you work with yeah so there's a couple of things here i think which um one of which was quite evident to begin with so a large part of our activity as well as producing curated projects talks commissions things like that that are often funded by arts council and other grant bodies we also work with individuals, groups, institutions to hire the gallery space out to host other sorts of exhibitions and other sorts of activity. So, so on an immediate basis, um, quite strangely in a sense, we had planned uh, basically March until July with back-to-back -back hires because of having to put the calendar in a particular way because of how we some of the artists we were working with as part of the curated program were only available towards the end of the year. So we were just planning to deliver a lot of higher projects, which was fantastic. <laughs> However, just when yeah. Yeah, this, uh, this, this happened, which meant that we've had to uh, cancel uh, the vast majority of the activity, some of which we're trying to postpone, but it obviously depends on multiple calendar issues since we've had to close the gallery. So that was one thing that's been impacted quite significantly, I guess more on a financial perspective. Mm -hmm. But as the last few weeks have transpired and we've been in regular contact with a lot of the artists that we're working with at the latter part of this year, we've 
started to become aware that, that obviously everything's having a knock-on effect. Artists can't access their studios, they can't work with the usual collaborators or in the usual way, they can't get access to fabricators in the usual way to produce their work. So things that perhaps we had anticipated we might be able to stage in, say, September, October time, if uh, a lockdown might be lifted at that point, and not no longer possible on that particular time frame because everything's been pushed back as the next few months uh, of lockdown continue. So, so our scheduling as well as our finances has, has significantly changed, uh, and quite a lot of our projects that were scheduled for the latter part of this year are having to be rescheduled for the beginning of 2021 and, and, and the first half of that year. So, so like most organisations, I think we're trying to deal with it as best we can and, and move things to where we feel is the most appropriate. And first and foremost, been able to provide support for the artists that we're working with. We tend to work with artists for 18 to 24 months before we present their work in a gallery because we want to support them and give them every opportunity to develop the ideas as, as yeah as, as well as they can really so these conversations are, are happening we're making these decisions and then one week it might be quite different because other uh, bits of information become available to us they trickle in yeah so is, is there any um have, have there been any positive spins on this? Are you able to adapt any of your programme? I know you run a lot of educational um, outreach and, and workshops and, and that kind of thing. Can you adapt any of that so it's online or can any of the artists, are they thinking about presenting or creating digitalised projects? I mean, I don't, I don't know, but... Yeah, I mean, there's been quite a lot of silver linings, actually, and it's brought quite a lot of things to the fore that perhaps would have taken a little bit longer to come into our consciousness, I guess, or or work the way up into our kind of priority list. So, as you mentioned, some of the artists that we're working with towards the end of the year, we're thinking about digital alternatives or digital add-ons that might be uh, able to be included in their commissions. So one artist particularly that we were working with in October, um, the physical manifestation of their exhibition is going to be in the beginning of next year, but we're still going to be delivering a digital element that's going to complement and work with their exhibition that will happen next year. So that will be launched at the same time as when they were initially uh, going to present the work in the gallery which was fantastic and it happens to be that it that it fits really closely with the nature of their work which is great um, we've also for the next six months with the gallery being closed essentially our activity for the six month minimum period being postponed or cancelled we've had to start thinking about how we can develop as you say a digital form of programming which was something that we'd always thought we'd like to include we've had the opportunity to have some audio on our website from previous talks and things like that that have been more archival information. But we haven't necessarily had the time or the capacity to think more thoroughly about how do we mesh the idea of a, a thorough digital programme to make it really relevant to what we normally do at Block, the educational ambitions, working with artists at particular points in their career, uh, really integrated development opportunities. So Sunshine and myself have put together a programme of activity for the six, uh, next six months, which will be an opportunity to really explore that, present lots of material digitally, working on a series of projects with artists um, that have been designed specifically to be digital rather than having to retrofit a digital um, element onto them. Brilliant. Uh, which is really exciting and it means that we can continue the activity for a noticeable part of the year without having a complete absence and not being able to support artists in the way because artists inevitably are even more vulnerable quite often than the organizations that are there to support them uh, freelancers creative individuals and um, so one of the big parts of this program we're developing is ensuring that we can um, garner funds from say the arts council and redistribute them out to people like artists to give them sustained support during a really precarious time so so there's a lot of potential silver linings some of these things are subject to funding uh, support that we're looking at receiving over the next few weeks um, but yeah there's been some really positive notes I guess it's made us prioritize certain things that perhaps weren't on the priority list yeah. previously great and if, if anyone listening um would like to help or support I don't know if you're running any kind of uh fund campaigns or or donations or anything like that or if they are an artist or they're interested in what you're doing and would like to get involved or find out more about you how can they do those things Right, so in terms of find out what, 
we're doing and keeping a track of what we're doing, the best place to check is our website. So it's blockprojects.co.uk. We have regular updates on there, especially due to uh, when we start to initiate this program, there'll be regular uh, updates on which sort of artists we're working with, the format of the new projects. It also has links to all of our social media there, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. They're regularly updated with different things. Different parts of uh, our program are, are regularly promoted on there as well as opportunities. What we'd really, really want people to do is to follow what we're doing over the next six months and and be involved in as many of the activities as, uh, as they can, really. So we'd be going to be doing quite a lot of talks and reading groups and things via Zoom and, and all these various different platforms that have emerged over the last few weeks. And the idea is to make them as interactive as possible. Quite a lot of the talks we usually have within our physical space are purposely really informal to encourage discussion between people rather than necessarily it being a speaker and audience sort of relationship, everyone's involved. And we're trying to think about ways in which we can integrate that within a, a digital platform. So we really encourage people to, to jump on, to give feedback, to contribute to the conversations and to contribute to the activity that we're doing. And then in an additional note, one of the things that we often do with our uh, program of events and talks because they're all free to the public in in our space we try and uh, see if there's a way in which we can gather support from the amount of people that come into the event so we often ask people to bring a food donation that we regularly take up to a local food bank uh, up at s2 so because our gallery is closed and we're no longer able to receive food bank donations one of the things we're going to try and encourage as we're doing the pro continuing the program digitally is uh, ensuring there's a, a donation link to the food bank so people can give cash donations to help support the food bank during this time so there's more information on our website we're going to try and make it a bit more explicit on our website as well and through our social media but but as well as attending the events it'd be fantastic if people were able to um, donate whatever they feel they can to s2 food bank brilliant that sounds amazing, Dave. I, I, for one, can't wait to see what's in store on the on the digital. I'll definitely be coming and get involved. In all sorts of interactive talks. I love a bit of talking, as you you can probably gather. Um, so just before we finish, um, I always like to ask people, what is the first thing you're going to do when we're all allowed out again? I think one of the big things that I'm going to do is go out on my bike. So I know that you're allowed to have uh, so much exercise at the moment, a particular kind of uh, in hours exercise or things like that. Well, I've, uh, I'm in the vulnerable category for various medical reasons. So I've actually been inside for the last three weeks and, and we imagine I will be inside for uh, many weeks. And I've been on the in indoor bike looking at a garage door for, for all this time. So I can't wait to get out into the Peak District and and to feel the the wind whilst you're on the bike i mean it's a really uh yeah simple thing to do um also in addition to that i think i'm really we mentioned this previously i guess i'm really looking forward to just going to a cafe and having a really good cup of coffee yeah. um, because i'm unable to make coffee it's anything like any of the places in sheffield that are great i'm exactly the same it's it's hopeless i might as well drink hot dishwater <laughs> Um, hey, thank you so much for talking to me today good luck with everything and we'll see you for that lovely delicious cup of coffee in a lovely cafe as soon as this is all over thank you thanks very much for inviting me no thanks for coming take care bye a curious arts production <laughs>